2589, that's where Thermax is currently at. Let's move right on then and connect with another corporate voice. Arul Selvan is the president and CFO at Chola Mandalam Finance and joins in right now to talk about their quarterly performance. Good to have you on board. And despite Q1 being seasonally weak, the AUM has been healthy. Will you be revisiting your guidance now and what segments are driving your growth? We have grown across all the verticals. Uh, if you look at vehicle finance has grown by around 32% and uh, loan against property has also grown by around 32%. Home loan is a is is a is a new business uh, is an old business but it uh, we are growing in other parts of the country and we are focusing more on uh, you know south and little bit on west now we are going into north and east so it has grown substantially uh, registering a growth of around 138 percent the small and uh, you know media uh, small and uh, mm-hmm. medium enterprise the SME business that has also grown substantially by around 100 percent these are the new businesses all the new businesses are grown by around almost 100 percent plus because the base is small uh, but uh, the existing business are also done well by registering a reasonably good growth of around 30 percent 30 percent plus so all put together has uh, delivered this growth and we expect uh, the momentum to continue sure so overall sentiment looks good with healthy disbursements but of late there have been reports of inventory piling up at dealerships what's your sense on the credit demand going forward especially in vehicle finance See, we, if you look at it, we are in the entire gamut of vehicle finance, right from heavies, lights, mini lights, tractors, sun construction equipment, two-wheeler, cars, MUVs, etc. And our focus has been on the, more on the rural side with regard to uh, the passenger vehicle, two-wheeler, tractors, and the mini lights and the lights. So our demand has seen, you know, reasonably good growth, as I was telling earlier. And we are also in use segment, and which is also showing a healthy growth because the price of new vehicles are more expensive. And the segments we operate in, the customer segments we operate in, are price sensitive. So to that extent, they are, you know, they are now we're seeing a little bit of a shift towards the used, and we see the demand fucking up there. This is more pronounced because of the price variant between a BS6 vehicle and the BS4 vehicles, which are now coming up as used vehicles in the overall industry. So we see, uh, we, we don't see any, you know, uh, fall in, uh, uh, in growth in the, in the coming quarters. Uh, but as I said, let us wait for the Q2 to get completed, then we'll be much more confident in committing some growth numbers. So, given that your margins have been hit this quarter on account of the rising cost of funds, what's your sense as to how cost of funds could shape up for the rest of the year and are margins going to moderate further? See, our expectation is the the cost of funds, the peak of uh, the cycle has, has been, you know, we have already faced it. Uh, from here, unless something drastically different happens, because still there are uncertainties whether with regard to the Fed rates or with regard to our own inflation, etc. Uh, but for those, uh, you know, events, I, I expect cost of funds to moderate going forward. The cost of funds would be at similar levels in Q2 and in Q3, Q4, we should see some reduction. Parallelly, the Vehicle finance book, which has the largest fixed rate book, would also be slowly changing its uh, its uh, its interest yield, you know, uh, as an overall book with the newer book coming in at higher yields. So that would make it a better yield, uh, you know, producing um, product, which would thereby improve the name in the coming quarters. But right now we are in the cusp of uh, where the old book is still a large large part of the vehicle finance book which is you know having an over yield uh, while uh, the cost of an impact has happened quite rapidly so thereby there has been little time to sort of adjust the yields on the vehicle finance book in the rest of the portfolios we already increased the rates because these are floating rate books Sure, there's obviously a lag between the asset and the liability repricing given the nature of your loans right especially on vehicle financing like you mentioned but how are uh, how many more quarters do you think till the overall book is able to reflect the new rates? 
see it will take at least three to four quarters for the vehicle finance to completely or predominantly become the new rate book. Uh, we, we have already crossed around three to four quarters, so it will be another four quarters because it will take anywhere between eight to 16 quarters for the for a, for the end end to end of a, of a portfolio to run down. But somewhere in the mid of the in, a, in eight quarters, the the mix will change that the larger the larger part of the portfolio would be the newer rate portfolios. The other point to note also is since we are growing robustly there, the growth would also fuel the shift quite fast. And given that provisions have tripled, your asset quality has also mildly deteriorated sequentially. Are you seeing some stress on your portfolio and what's the reason for the provisions having risen so sharply? See, there are two, two aspects to it. One is, uh, you know, I mean, we had always been also on the other side questioned our provision coverage is always low. So we have kept it at the same levels only. If you look at the provision coverage, it's been at the same level as what we closed the March. So I don't see that, you know, that, that this, is, uh, this has been a very large shift in provision. And certainly there has been no triggers to make any extra provisions uh, in this quarter so what's been running through is we have in march when when we converted the uh, the new pdlgds every year we change our pdlgds in march so that taking the last five years or six years average depending on the product so as you know the pdlgds of all the products changed you know, to some extent, because the loss levels during the COVID period were higher. So to that extent, the PDLGD shift is, you know, will, will be reflected in the, in the provisioning that we will be creating uh, as we move forward. So this part will again iron out as we get into further years of better performance so that this anomaly of this COVID two years of higher provisioning is sort of ironed out. So you're not seeing any fresh triggers to make higher provisioning from here on, but overall how's the asset quality shaping up, especially on the incremental book? See, the asset quality has been quite good. Actually, I would say normally in a pre-COVID period, if you look at it, Q1, the asset quality will slightly deteriorate because there would have been a lot of, you know, uh, collection efforts going in, in Q4 because of the year end, etc. So Q1 will always have a slightly uh, reversal of asset quality trend. Actually, in our case, you would have seen that we have just moved, it, moved the stage 3 by 5 bips and as a matter of fact, the RBI and PA norms we have reduced from where we were at from 4.6 to 4.3. <clears throat> Sorry. So asset quality is is performing much better and uh, than what it was pre-COVID in a normal you know turn of uh, quarter on quarter basis, which used to happen in a pre-COVID scenario. And we expect this to further improve in Q2, Q3, etc. Q2 would the improvement would be moderate because these are you know, months of rainy seasons as well as uh, you know, auspicious months where the borrowing uh, borrowers' earning capacity is a little bit challenged because of their you know the rains and uh, the inauspicious months. But in Q3 and Q4, because of festivities as well as agri uh, agricultural harvesting etc., the earning potential you know sort of uh, increases substantially, and so that's when you see much better collection and reductions, substantial reductions in the stage three and stage uh, and then the NPA numbers, uh, which we again expect to happen if the uh, if the rain falls and the other other aspects of the economy stays put. And could you also tell us how collection efforts are panning out specifically to specifically towards the delinquent like, accounts? See, the collection efforts are, you know, more than 110% uh, during this quarter also. And that is what is reflected in the NPA numbers, both in stage two and stage three, you would have seen reductions happening uh, as compared to um, the March numbers, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you look at it from a percentage point of view, uh, as it's, if you look at the uh, stage three, it has moved up, 
okay, marginally by five bips. And in the case of stage two, it has moved up. It has moved down from 3.68 to 3.51. So um, this, this is the reflection of the collection effort. And so I would say that the collection effect efforts have been continuously you know, um, at its peak during this quarter, as in any other quarter. See, the Chola's strength is its collection, and I think that's what keeps us, you know, good at uh, keeping our, you know, NPAs as well as the stage three in a much more controlled manner as compared to players in similar domain. Okay, so on that note, we let you go. Appreciate you joining us on the show. For the markets, it's a bit of a slip that we are witnessing at this point.